Hello everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earthglow and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. So in today's video, we're going to be unboxing and giving you my out of the bottle first impressions of all of these spring oils inside here from Northwood Distributing. And I'm really excited because you guys know, if you're new to this channel, <laughs> the fragrance videos are my absolute favorite to film. But anyways, let's get right into today's video and I hope that you enjoy. So like with all my fragrance videos, I'm gonna be showing you guys the unboxing, exactly how these oils were packed and then I'm gonna be smelling them and without looking at anything, giving you my out of the bottle first impressions. And so a lot of times these companies will send me their fragrance notes and all that information um, which is great, but I my goal with these videos is to just have fun and give you guys my honest first impressions without looking at anything. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip you all around and I'm so excited. All right, you guys, so I'm all fancy here with my box opener. I am so, like, I never thought this would be something that I would purchase, but this was actually gifted to me by Nia Handcrafted. And <laughs> like, I, ever since she gave it to me, I'm constantly using it, so, and I don't feel like I'm gonna cut my hands off when I'm opening boxes anymore. Um, oh my gosh, so this is their spring and summer fragrance release. See that? Oh, I'm so excited. It feels like spring today as well. Um, and they always send like these cute little, I actually have their magnet on my fragrance, um, one of the filing cabinets that I keep my fragrances in. Okay, so I have no idea what the names even are. Oh my gosh, and one of them says unnamed. Do you all see that? Um, wow, there's a lot of oil. I'm gonna be getting through all of these in this video. So if you guys need to grab a coffee, grab a tea, I got my lavender and honey tea over here. So, oh, I'm so excited. So it's really weird because normally I'm a winter person, but we've been getting the most beautiful spring weather like the last few days. And so I was like, I need to film this video because this package came in and I'm just in a mood for spring and summer, which is so unusual for me. Um, but yeah, I don't even know you guys. So some of these oils, like looking at the names right off the bat, I know they're not gonna be for me like Rainbow Sherbert. My goal with them is to try to give like my, almost like on Food Network, how the judges, you can't always know, um, you can't always like every single ingredient and every single dish that they're making, but you're judging it based on what it's called and on how well they put that together. Um, this next one is called Lost Cherry. I'm just gonna show you all some of the names really quick here. We've got Unnamed and Nectarine Blossom. We have, ooh, wow. I'm excited for sun-drenched vineyard. I love anything that gives me, like takes me somewhere. Oh, those kind of rustic vibes, wanderlust vibes. If you all don't know, those are the names of my two uh, favorite collections. Uh, and I need to get the rustic collection restocked. That is like on my list, you guys. Um, oh wow, okay, lemon and rosemary palms. That is already giving me spa vibes and I'm living for it. Um, we got Peach Mimosa, that one I'm kind of scared for. And then, oh wow, Sea Lavender and Musk. That name is literally a vibe. Um, Daydreams and Lemon and Eucalyptus. Both of those just seem so spa, <sighs> like Ayurveda, like just, mm, it, it makes me feel like I'm gonna have a meditation. Um, narcissist and High Maintenance, all right. <laughs> interesting um, some of these more abstract names you never really know until you smell them what take they're gonna have oh wow okay rose noir I'm excited for that and then this other one is called neon blossoms all right and then we have lys 41 and then bay 19 which I'm guessing these two are gonna be dupes or type fragrances would be my guess so what should we start with? Oh my God, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna start off with, I think I wanna start off with, how about we do the, the narcissist? Like, 
that's just, I've heard that name used in fragrance before. And I'm curious like where, what type of a take they're gonna have on this. Is it gonna be kind of berry-esque? I forgot to mention this. I always mention this at the beginning of the video, but these are just my out of the bottle first impressions, right? And I think most of you know that, but if you're new to the channel, keep in mind that fragrance is very personal. It's very subjective. Something that I like, you might not like. Something you really like, I might put on my fails list, but oh my God, you guys, I am smelling something from like a foot away with this and oh my gosh, I'm living for what I'm smelling. Here goes Narcissist by Northwood Distributing. Oh wow, 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 we are starting out hot. Oh my gosh, you guys, I don't even know. Okay, this reminds me, if you have smelled um, Baccarat 540, I know Simbi has a really good dupe for that one. Oh my God, this is along the lines of that. Extremely sophisticated. Wow, this reminds me of Oudwood by Tom Ford, except a little more gender neutral type of a vibe. I'm getting like a leather, I'm getting, wow, some very sophisticated accords. I can't pick out individual notes, right? There's like a some type of berry accord, but it's more of like a very sophisticated. This is chillingly good chillingly good it reminds me of some the best way i can describe it is some type of version of baccarat 540 and oudwood by tom ford if those two had a baby oh my gosh you guys narcissist by um northwood distributing you guys i'm gonna be looking at this oil on their website after this video because oh my goodness this might be my new manhattan candle because you all know I've had a problem with Oudwood. I get it from Stone Candles for that candle and it just has not been performing the way I want. So I've pulled Manhattan from my line, my Wanderlust line because it has, it was creating like after two months when you would burn the candle, almost like a sort of chemical type vibe at first, just like a weird smell. And it's just, it happens with some fragrances um, and it could be, Oftentimes I found if you change the wick or you change different variables, it can work out. But for me personally, I, I'm not playing with my wicks at all. That collection, I use my luxury blend in the 0.04 series, 0.5 inch crackling boosters. And so anyways, this is a strong candidate for my Manhattan candle, depending on how this throws in my blend. All right, next up, well, oh my God, let's take a look at Sea Lavender and Musk. The name on this is giving me like a synthesis between like a spa lavender and lemon vibe with like an oceanic vibe, like I'm in an ocean zen type of a state. Oh my gosh. All right, so this is Sea Lavender and Musk by Northwood. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh my God, I just whacked myself in the face. This is really sophisticated wow okay so this is like if you had if you've smelled like mahogany and teakwood by bath and body works but that had like an oceanic baby oh my god i know midwest has one that is called um i'll put the name up on the screen but it's basically like mahogany and teakwood flaming candle has a good version nature's garden has a good version i think nature's garden is closest to the bath and body works version but this if you're looking for that like that dusky like sexy seductive sea type of a scent that has a little bit of a spa aesthetic to it but it's also like just sophistication, like this is really good. Sea lavender and musk. Oh my God, we are definitely two for two. I would rate both of these 10 out of 10. And I will be ranking these on my Patreon. So patrons definitely stay tuned for that. I should have that up um, shortly after I post this video. All right, next up, let's take a look at, all right, let's do, I gotta break my streak here. This is Rainbow Sherbert. Um, I, like I said, this is not gonna be for me. I can almost tell you without smelling it. I don't like things that smell like candy or that smell like, you guys already know if you've watched this channel for any amount of time. I'm gonna be judging this in Northwood, the throw. Like I can already smell something a foot away on all three of these. Um, I'm gonna be judging this just based on the name and based on someone who might want something like that in their line. Oh yeah, no, no. Okay, 
I don't get rainbow sherbet from this. I, I, I get a sort of version of it, but it's more like bubble gum to me, like a fake type of bubble gum, like one of those flavored bubble gums that you would get at the grocery store. So I get like a synthetic berry type of a note, but it's a very like childlike, immature um, type of a berry and no. Let's take a look at, all right, let's take a look at Lost Cherry. Now this take, I really don't know. Cherry fragrances, I'm kind of hit or miss with them, right? Like it could be a really nice sophisticated cherry, like a, mm, I'm trying to think of an example of that. Ah, they're really hard. I think Makesy has a few good ones, but cherry fragrances can easily go into that sort of childlike fake category. I don't mean to say f childlike is fake, but just kind of like that synthetic type of a, like bubble gum or toothpaste. That's what I'm hoping this doesn't do. So here goes Lost Cherry by Northwood. Oh, okay. No, this does smell something like, uh, it smells like something I got from Bath and Body Works as a kid, but it's more almost has like an amaretto component to it that I kind of like. Um. Yeah, so this is not, I would say this is kind of, if you like a cherry amaretto, like a type of gelato maybe, um, I'm on the fence, right? Like on one hand, I like it. And on another hand, I'm getting something that's kind of synthetic from it as well, which totally could go away when it's in a final product. A lot of the time when these are just out of the bottle, that is not uncommon. Um, yeah, I'm on the fence. It's like a cherry amaretto. This one is not as prominent as the first three out of the bottle. Um, it still definitely is hitting me with the strip, but those other ones I was smelling like a foot away. Let's take a look at Daydreams. This is another one that the name is sort of nebulous, right? It's kind of abstract. You really don't know. They could go like a linen type of a take, a fruity type of a vibe. They could go I don't know, it, it's very abstract. There's a lot of different directions, like a lavender, a lilac. So here goes Daydreams by Northwood. Oh, okay, this is really light out of the bottle. I like what I'm smelling. It's very light. Um, I'm getting something that is kind of lavender-like. It kind of has that, a little bit of an oceanic component, but it's more like I'm just lying in a field and the sun's shining down on me. I got lavender blossoms all around me. I'm lying in the grass. I'm looking up at the sky. Um, I'm getting ozone. I'm getting, like I said, kind of a spa, like floral quality to this, but I'm not getting enough of it. Let's take a look at Nectarine blossoms, nectarine blossom and honey. I kind of like the name of this. Uh, I tend to like fragrances like oatmeal milk and honey. I tend to like lavender with honey. I feel like it just adds a lot of time a sweeter accord, but not in a synthetic sugary way. So let's see what nectarine blossoms and honey is gonna do for us. Oh yeah, I think. Okay, this is not at all synthetic. It's not at all childlike. It's very mature. It leans spa-like, it leans upscale. Um, I, so the nectarine, it's a very sophisticated nectarine. Um, I'm not sure, well, I am getting the honey, but it's in a really subtle way, like a New Zealand type of a honey or something. Um, oh, I just whacked myself in the face with a strip. Um, yeah, so I feel like I'm getting a strong green note to this one as well, like leaves, like, <sighs> yeah, like again, kind of like the last one, like I'm out in a field and the sun is shining down on me, but I have a lot of foliage around me as well. And I am definitely getting the nectarine, but this is in one of the more sophisticated ways that I've smelled. A lot of times fragrances that are titled peach or plum, well not plum, but peach or nectarine, or that kind of stuff that can come off really bubblegum-like, synthetic. Um, this does not do that at all, but I would say that if you tend to not like fragrances that have a strong green note to them, like Cactus Flower and Jade is a good example, or Baja Cactus Blossom, if you don't like those types, I would steer away from this one because you are getting a lot of green notes, but I am living for this. Um, this one is growing on me the more I smell it and the more it kind of dries down on the strip. Next, let's take a look at Unnamed. No idea where this one is gonna go. Can you all hear the wind chimes? It's super windy out today. All right, so I have no idea, but this is Unnamed. 
Oh, just whack myself. Interesting. Okay, this is very light out of the bottle. Um, it, oh, so this reminds me of something I smelled recently by, it reminds me of something I smelled by Simbi. Um, it's kind of like a dark academia type of a vibe. Yeah, I'm getting a fruity note. This would be a good Halloween fragrance. Uh, like a dark library. I'm getting a patchouli and a fruity note and kind of a leather accord. Um, but in a very kind of dark academic type of a way. It's lighter than I would like though. I like what I'm getting. Um, I'm just not getting enough of it. What should we do next? Maybe. Let's take a look at Neon Blossoms. Now this one, I don't know what they really mean by neon. Do they mean it's gonna have a prominent floral note? Do they mean it's kind of an electric invigorated blossom with like a lemon note to it? So here goes Neon Blossoms. Oh, no. Okay. This fragrance is very prominent out of the bottle. Um, I don't like this at all. Um, yeah, so I'm getting something that's almost, um, wow, okay, this smells like something that I've purchased before from a big company, but I can't recall what it is. So I'm getting like a fruity accord and like a leathery, kind of like a, a berry accord to this one, um, but it's kind of heavy and weighted down. Um, yeah, it almost has like a licorice type of a note to it or something that's really um, kind of prominent in your face, but in a way that is um, kind of obtrusive to me. Uh, that could totally tone down when it's burning. Like I could see this being a good fragrance if you like Halloween type vibes, a lounge like fragrance, a black maybe, um, I don't really know. It sort of has a candy like vibe, but also a licorice type of a aesthetic to it. All right, let's take a look at Bay 19. Now I get a fragrance from Stone Candles that is called Bays, which is a diptyque type and it's really good and it's a really great thrower. So I'm wondering if this is going to be kind of like that type of a vibe um, where you get a berry note, a floral note, and a little bit of a sandalwood kind of woody base. That's what I use for my Paris fragrance in my Wanderlust collection and it's one of my best sellers of all time. So let's see what Bay 19 is going to do for us. Oh. Okay, no, this is nothing like Bays by Stone Candles, the diptyque type. Um, this one, okay, it has kind of a dark, almost floral, woody accord to it. Um, I'm not sure that out of the bottle, this one really comes together. I think that a lot of these oils you need to put into final products to see how they're gonna do. Um, yeah, this one to me is kind of, it's woody, it's sort of earthy, it's dark. It again kind of has that dark academia, Halloween almost type of a vibe. Well, if you're looking for like a witch's brew type of a fragrance, um, I get that vibe from this, but then also I get something that's kind of really classy with like a leathery note and like a woody, um, like I could definitely see this being a high-end fragrance. Um, if this is a dupe for something, um, I could see uh, Tom Ford potentially releasing this. Um, it definitely has that aesthetic to it. Um, it's just out of the bottle. This one, I'm, the notes don't totally come together for me. Um, so I would need to put this into a product of some sort. Next, let's take a look at, oh, I'm gonna save Sun Drenched Vineyard for the end, as well as Lemon and Rosemary Palms. I'm so excited for those. Let's take a look at Peach Mimosa. Um, mimosa fragrances are really popular. I know Erica from Memory Box Candle Co. has one that she keeps in her regular line that has been one of her best sellers for a while um, and that she really likes. So I'm curious what Peach Mimosa is gonna do. I'm expecting something kind of fizzy, something that is gonna give me that carbonation, something that's gonna have the peach vibe to it and kind of maybe a little bit seductive, but also fun and playful. So here we go. Oh, okay, this smells, if you've smelled Peach Nectar by Candle Science, 
It smells like that fragrance. Um, so I'm definitely getting the carbonation. I'm getting the peach. Um, it's a very synthetic type of a peach, almost like, yeah, like you might get in a drink of some sort. It's been mixed with some sugar, with some ice, uh, and kind of blended up. I'm definitely getting that vibe from this one. Um, this fragrance, I would say, is not for me, personally, uh, but I would say that if you're looking for that kind of fun, playful, summer type of a peach with that mimosa, that kind of uh, just a little bit sweeter, but you also get that kind of alcoholic component, so it's kind of more sophisticated, I would say that you might want to check out this Peach Mimosa by Northwood. Next up, let's take a look at Let's take a look at YLS41. And I wonder if this is also a dupe for something. Um, so I am curious, not familiar with this fragrance, if it is. Here goes YLYS41 by Northwood. Oh, okay, this smells high end. I'll put a little more. This one is a little bit lighter out of the bottle. Yeah. Okay, so this smells like a very high end, and I don't like to use the word feminine leaning fragrance, but it's definitely got a prominent, like this would be a wearable, like a perfume. If you bought like a Versace type of a perfume, or you bought something by Chanel, um, I could see this being like a, a women's marketed fragrance um, that definitely, smells like a designer expensive perfume. Um, the notes that I'm getting are definitely some florals and I'm getting some berries to this and kind of a woodier sheer musk type of a base. Um, but yeah, I really like this. I think that if this came together in a candle the way that it smells out of the bottle, that this could be something that you have people walk into your house and they're like, they feel like they're walking into a million dollar home. I'm really excited for Rose Noir. Um, I tend to like fragrances that have things like Noir or like Night or Twilight in the name. And I feel like with Rose, that could be a really good combination. I love the Rose and Oud fragrance by Candle Science. I know that one is really, like people go back and forth on it. I am one of the fans. I adore that oil. Um, but I tend to like rose fragrances in general, and I like kind of the woody, dusky, noir component. So let's see what this one is gonna do. Oh, yeah. Okay, this smells expensive. Um, this is exactly like the name, I'm getting the noir. So if you like the Into the Night, Twilight Woods type of fragrances, I reference those oils a lot from Bath and Body Works. Um, this is definitely along the lines of something like that. It is gonna be really perfumey. Um, but I'm living for it. I love anything dusky and enchanted twilight. I'm definitely getting the rose. I would say the rose in this one, it's kind of more of a white rose almost. Like it's a red rose, but it has like a white component to it almost. Like you just got married, you're like an old school couple and you're in a fancy hotel. Yeah, I like this. It has that kind of newness of like new love to it almost like at night. Let's check out High Maintenance. Um, it's an interesting name on this one, Northwood. I have no idea where they're going with that. I wonder if it's gonna be kind of a more perfumey-like fragrance or more of a spa type of a take on that. Oh, wow, this is really interesting. Okay, wow, what am I, I've never smelled this, anything like this before. Um, yeah, wow, this is very interesting. Oh yeah, so this again kind of reminds me of something like if you like the Baccarat 540, this one does lean more <sighs> kind of perfumey, feminine, like perfumey with it has more of a prominent berry note, more of a prominent floral top note to it. Um, this is really interesting. Uh, but it has a really blended base as well that's woody and earthy and a little bit leathery. Oh my God, I just whacked myself in the lip. So we're down to lemon and eucalyptus, sun-drenched vineyard, and lemon and rosemary palms. So let's take a look at, I'm super excited for all of these. Let's do the lemon and eucalyptus. Um, this one, I feel like it's gonna be a spa-leaning fragrance 
that, oh my God, you guys, and I can smell something like a foot away that I'm really liking. So eucalyptus as an oil is, so people like kind of go back and forth. There's different types of eucalyptus. Eucalyptus globulus as an essential oil is very like, prominent in your face, almost like cough medicine type of a vibe. But then there's other types of eucalyptus where they blend it more and they use different strains of that essential oil and it just tones it down and just makes it really high end seductive spa vibes. So anyways, with lemon, I feel like that could work out really well. So here goes lemon and eucalyptus by Northwood. Oh yeah, wow. Okay, so I'm definitely getting a prominent eucalyptus note, very prominent. Um, like the essential oil, like the eucalyptus globulus essential oil, but I would say this one, so the medicinal components of it are kind of balanced out with the citrusy components of the lemon. Um, but this one I would say definitely would lean toward an apothecary-like collection. So if you have that and you're looking for something that is gonna bring in the lemon with the eucalyptus and a little bit of sweetness to it as well, it's almost like if you brought a lemon candy into the eucalyptus globulus essential oil, um, and it's very prominent out of the bottle, I'm getting a nice balance of both of those components. We are already down to the last two oils. Oh my gosh, okay. So Sun Drenched Vineyard, I am so excited for this oil, you guys. And then we also have lemon and rosemary palms. Oh my gosh. So I tend to love rosemary fragrances. I love rosemary sage by Candle Science. I love anything that's earthy and kind of pine-like, but that doesn't give me straight up floor cleaner type of vibes. So I like that, the kind of earthy pine fragrances, but spa leaning. So here goes lemon and rosemary palms. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, this is almost, this is a really inspired take. Um, and I would argue out of the bottle that I am not getting, um, I'm getting more of a dusky vibe. I would change the name on this one. Like I love what I'm getting, but this is more of like, Again, like a mahogany teakwood. This reminds me of one of the first ones that I smelled that I really liked, the sea lavender and musk. I'm gonna do those two side by side because they have a lot in common um, and they both smell kind of spa-like, dusky, oceanic. So this is the one that I just did, the sun drenched, no, I'm sorry, the lemon and rosemary palms, this one. And then the one on my left is the, um, Sea Lavender and Musk. So your right, my left, Sea Lavender and Musk. <laughs> my right, your left is the Rosemary, um, Lemon and Rosemary Palms. Oh yeah, these two are very similar. So, <sighs> it's very interesting. The sea one, I'm getting more of like a brine component, like a sea salt type of a vibe, but both of them have a very strong like mahogany and teakwood aesthetic. The one that's called Lemon and Rosemary Palms. I really don't know that I'm getting any lemon or rosemary out of the bottle. I'm getting just like a straight mahogany and teakwood almost, but I might be getting a little bit of rosemary and lemon like in the background. I like both of these. I think that the Sea Lavender and Musk is definitely named well. It fits the name to a T. I'm getting the musk, I'm getting the C component, but again, it's like that mahogany and teakwood type of a take. Whereas, oh my gosh, yeah, I whacked myself again, but the lemon and rosemary, um, I'm just not getting, so I would say that that one, um, unless it totally transforms into something else when you put it in wax out of the bottle, I'm getting more of a mahogany teakwood with a little bit of those notes possibly in the background. Um, but I really like it. Last but not least, we have the one I'm most excited for, Sun Drenched Vineyard. Oh my gosh, you guys. So I am not sure if they're gonna take like a grapevine, like a vineyard type of aesthetic like that, or if it's gonna be like I'm lying in the fields, the sun is coming down, I've got the golden hour light on me. I have no idea. I expect something that's maybe a synthesis of what I just said, but here we go with Sun Drenched Vineyard. Oh, okay. So I'm definitely getting a grape note to this. Yeah, the more this dries down, the more it reminds me of like a Chardonnay type of a fragrance. Um, but I am getting, 
So I'm getting a prominent grape kind of Chardonnay note and the more it dries down and the further you keep it from your face, the more it smells like actual Chardonnay and not just like grapes. Yeah, so as it dries down, I'm getting more like green notes as well. That's very interesting. It's very prominent too out of the bottle. Yeah, so I would say with this oil, it's gonna be one where you wanna let it sit on your strip for a while and totally dry down and see how it changes. And this one would probably, I could see this one really coming to life in wax and you get kind of that balance that you're looking for. The synergy of the grape, the Chardonnay, and the kind of green notes, and then a little bit of like golden sun coming down. That is gonna be all for this video. If you did enjoy this one, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you are an Earth Glow patron. Um, I will be posting my rankings of these oils to my Patreon and that is really exciting. I know you guys love it when I do that. I'll have the link if you'd like to join. It's just a few dollars a month and it allows me to keep making this content for you guys. Um, but I'll have the link to that in the description of this video as well as in a pinned comment. You also get a ton of perks. Um, but yeah, thank you so much to Northwood for sending me these oils. Once again, this video was in no way sponsored or affiliated by Northwood, but they did reach out to me and offer to send me these oils, which helps me to make this content sustainable for you guys on YouTube. Um, but anyways, I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light, and leave me a comment below if you've tried any of these oils or which one that you are most excited to try out. I am super excited. I've got all my creme de la cremes on this platter, and there are six of them, so that is really exciting exciting to me. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light, and I'm wishing all of you happy candle making. I would like to take the time to thank my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out goes to Wendy, Nicole Rott, Nancy with All About Me Beauty Bar, Merle, Brad with Neon City Scents, Junelle, Michelle, Paula, Zahara with Crystalline Candle Co., Julie with Belux Candle Co., Jennifer with Bea Essentials, Selena with Bambury Street Creations, Andrea, Sue, Nick, Bruce, Emma, Flavia, Jennifer with Bittersweet Candle Co., Danielle, Anitra with Ninth and Maxwell, Matthew, Jindy, Lisa, Elizabeth, Tammy, Carol, Cheryl, Maya, Losa, Betty, Luzdari, Taichi, John with Past Sense Candles, Angela, Amber, Bluegrass Bath and Candle Co., Marketer, Allie, Carla, Todd with Cold Creek Candle Co., Krista, SS, Karen with River Birch Soaps, Kina, Jessica with Blessings Oasis, Angela, Amanda, Denise with Grumblegeist Candle Co., She's More, Cindy, Kim, Teresa, Frida, Veronica, Shiromi, J Creative P, Colette, Nicole, Stella, Leanne, Martha, Angela, Jamie, Chadwick, Lisa, Z, Mabel, Arev, Bobby, Jamie, Brian, Amy, Julia, Stephanie, Honey, Janet, Terry, Maria, Carla, Lo, Callisto, and Genevieve. Your support is deeply appreciated.